Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite theorems, or to be more precise, what are my favorite subfields of mathematics, because I kind of want to give it a slightly different flavor. I will highlight a theorem, but I actually want to talk about different fields of mathematics, because there are really quite a few quite interesting fields of mathematics, and as I said, kind of want to highlight them by just pointing out a theorem. A little bit like the following, um, if you think about calculus, like standard classical calculus, Kind of there's one theorem that describes calculus, everything you ever do in calculus, which is the fundamental theorem of calculus, which kind of, well, we all know the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's a relationship between the derivative and the integral, the two most important uh, kind of concepts you ever learn in calculus. Not quite that you ever learn in life, but at least that you ever learn in calculus. Now, I kind of want to do the same. Um, obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but there, there won't be as nice blueprint examples. But I'm still trying to give some good, nice indication what the field is studying. And the first one I just essentially randomly, uh, well, so they're not ordered. So it's, it's my favorite list of theorems or whatever, but it's not ordered in some sense. So this is not my favorite field among the favorite fields. Very complicated. It's not ordered. Um, I just took it out randomly. So I just randomly put a lot of fields in a, in a, in a math computer program and just randomly uh, just took one and then I uh, will continue just randomly generating uh, fields. Well, I'm not randomly generate fields. I'm randomly considering fields. And the first thing I would like to consider is what people call extremal graph theory. I'm going to motivate what that actually is. Um, but of course, it starts with extremal graph theory. So there should be graph theory. And everyone here probably knows what graph theory is. So let me just say the following. Graph theory is completely misnamed because everyone except mathematicians gives graphs the correct name of networks because there's just too many things named graphs. And to convince you that there are just too many things named graphs, let's just ask what Dr. Google will say if I Google graph. Huh? Let's see what we find. We find a uh, well, graph of a function. Fantastic. You look at the pictures, and you see those types of graphs. There are too many things that are called graphs. And there's not a single one, as far as I can see, that is the graph I'm actually, maybe this, oh, here you go. <laughs> there's not a single one that is actually the graph that I'm looking at. So network, graph, whatever, uh, vertices and edges. And this is like, like ridiculously su successful field of mathematics, which kind of originates a long time ago, but as a, as a field that kind of started in the previous century at one point, and it's just ridiculously successful. It's just oh, unbelievable. The network theory, which sounds a bit better, but somehow, um, yeah, I would probably say graph theory. I'm just too used to that. It's just too late for me now. Hopefully it's not too late for you to call it network theory. Hope everyone knows kind of what a network is. Some vertices and some edges between them. Human relationships usually form nice networks. Uh, social media, whatever, something like that. Okay, extremal graph theory, extremal network theory, whatever. So there should be the extremal part. And the extremal part is best motivated by a tree. A tree is in some sense an extremal type of object. So extremal graph theory, you should think about like it studies questions of the form. What is a maximal x under assumption y? What is kind of the maximum or the minimum or whatever of the theory, the extreme points of the theory? And the kind of question that you would like to keep in mind is the following. What is the maximum number of edges in a graph, and in vertices, with no cycles, right? Maximum number of edges, x, no cycles is y. And the example answer is it's a tree. Yeah? It's uh, one of the classical facts. I hope you have seen that one before. One of the classical facts in graph theory, you can have the maximum number of edges is n minus one. And it's always achieved with a tree. So here, n is six. And I hope if I'm not miscounting, I have five edges. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm not going to count, do the count for this one here. Um, anyway, so the class of trees is a maximal example and um, extreme or an extremal example and extremal graph theory will study those types of objects so something that is extremal under some condition okay and uh, the prototypical example or the prototypical theorem is actually the tree theorem if you want 
but that's maybe too well known and i show you something that is less well known but similar in spirit and kind of the starting points of extreme graph theory it's called mantle theorem it's by now roughly 110 years old proof is actually quite simple um, i'll leave it to you if you want to think about it anyway so a triangle what's a triangle in a graph a triangle in a graph is a triangle in a graph so you have three vertices and they form a triangle and we, we don't want that so our condition will be triangle free so we don't don't want triangles so triangle free graph so here for example the pentagon is a triangle free graph sure the triangle is not a triangle free graph but the pentagon and the square are triangle free graphs so here's a list of triangle free graphs right so no three vertices form a triangle and you can ask the same question what is the maximal number of edges you can have under the condition of having no triangle instead of having no cycle having no triangle and you get a nice answer and that's again this was kind of the, the theorem uh it's called mantle theorem is the starting point of extreme graph theory so the maximum number of edges you can have is a bit more difficult it's n squared over four when you round down uh, that number and this is mantle theorem and the extreme type of object you get is a bipartite graph on those number of vertices so a bipartite graph is always triangle free because in order to go from you somehow I always have steps lengths four. So here, if you start at this bipartite, let's say our colors are red and blue. So if you start at red, you need to go to blue and to red, but to different red. So you can't form a nice triangle because they're not, not connected. So they're triangle free and it turns out that they're the maximal ones. So uh, my k for four, here in this case, n would be eight. Oh, let's hope I can do the calculation. N eight squared over four and the uh, possible is that 16. Okay, let me see whether I can count life. Probably not, but we'll see. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, looks good. Looks like 8. So I want another 4 and another 4, I guess. So let's see whether I can identify 4. I see this pattern. Um, this should be 4 edges. Excellent. And then I see the pattern itself. Uh, is it right? Yeah, I think I do. I see the pattern itself, what is a good color? Maybe this one. I see the pattern here itself a little bit twisted to the side. And there's another four. And I hope that adds up to 16, if I'm not completely mistaken. So yeah, it works out. So the theorem is not wrong. I didn't find a counter example to the theorem. Hey, so the replacement for the theorem here, uh, where trees are now replaced by bipartite graphs. An extreme graph theorem will answer um, very similar questions. And this is kind of nice because this theorem itself here is, by the way, motivated um, by a theorem which was proven much later. It's called Rhodes' theorem. So it was motivated by something that was proven much later. And um, so analog theorems are kind of known throughout mathematics. And this one is a very famous one. It's, it's exactly the same statement where, where we replace triangle with three-term arithmetic progression. And yeah, so there's a certain condition which I'm not going to explain because this is just wrap them up but anyway um as soon as you have certain conditions satisfied you will not have a three-term arithmetic progression so ap for short usually because it's just too difficult to pronounce anyway so a uh, here's an example of which has no three terms so it's triangle free no three term uh, progression and the progression would be something like okay you have three numbers a b c and the distance between them is always the same so this is whatever a d and this is distance d and we can see here this is not working so two plus the are three apart so i would need eight but eight is not in our set so it doesn't work and nothing here will work so there is no uh whatever let's say here they have one apart but this guy is not here anymore for example uh these are three apart but seven is not here and so on so there's no three term arithmetic progression and this mantle theorem um was kind of a motivation for uh, well not really they, they run in parallel they run in parallel and you have many many similar theorems what is the condition that you need to satisfy such that things will be maximized and that's what uh, extreme graph theory studies under the umbrella of graph theory Hence the name under the umbrella of network theory. Don't forget that. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.